everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here. Today I'm here to talk to you about six tips for nailing your working interview. So if you aren't familiar with a working interview in veterinary medicine, haven't heard that term before, usually what will happen is you'll have your formal in-person interview first, and then if you pass that, if you will, then you'll be called back for a second interview, which will be a working interview, which is how the clinic will judge your skill set and also your personality and how it will fit into their clinic culture. So today we're gonna to talk about six tips on nailing the working interview. So tip one, dress appropriately. Typically clinics will tell you what they expect you to wear for your working interview. If they don't tell you, just ask. I prefer if people wear solid colors, so something similar to what I am wearing now, just a nice neutral solid color, no crazy patterns or anything like that. Make sure you specify if you're doing something like a mixed or large animal practice, if they prefer or if it's best if you wear jeans. When I'm working every day in mixed animal practice, I prefer jeans. They hold up a lot better for the type of work that we're doing. So you may be okay with just wearing jeans based on the practice that you're going to. However, if you're wearing jeans, wear a belt. We do a lot of bending and a lot of squatting in veterinary medicine. We don't want to see your pants sagging down and your bottom hanging out. So make sure you follow those guidelines for dressing appropriately. Other things you might want to consider are if you're doing field work, consider the type of weather that you're working in. I live in Western Washington where it's rainy a lot. So we always bring rain jackets with us because you never know when the weather might turn into something rainy or misty. So take those factors into consideration. Also, if you're gonna be out doing field work for a working interview, take into consideration snacks and water. So you wanna have a water bottle with you. You don't know how many stops you'll be able to make. Sometimes emergencies will catch you out a little later or longer than you might have originally anticipated. Tip two, this is the same one from my regular interview episode that we did, be on time. Just to repeat all of this again for you guys, this is how we gauge how an interviewee is going to be as an employee. So are you going to show up, be on time, ready to work when your scheduled shift is starting? So make sure you're at least five to 10 minutes early. I recommend 10 to check in for your working interview with the respective receptionist or whatever person you're supposed to be meeting with at the clinic that day. Tip number three. Typically when you're having a working interview, you'll be assigned to either a technician or sometimes how the clinic works, you might be assigned to a doctor technician team. Make sure you're staying with that team for the duration of your interview. Nothing is more aggravating than turning around and finding the person there for a working interview is missing. And if you are missing, you better have a really good reason. So make sure you're always sticking really close with that team so that they can assess your skills, ask you questions, test your knowledge, and you're present. And it also just shows that you really want that job. You're present in the moment, you're where you are asked to be, and you're doing what you need to be doing. If for some reason there are some circumstances that come up where you might be asked to stay outside of an exam room or break away from the team that you're assigned to momentarily, and that's okay, you need to respect that decision made by the doctor or the technician, but in that time, make yourself useful, seen, and heard. In a busy veterinary hospital, there's always things going on. You will have restrictions as a person there strictly for a work, working interview, but what you can do in the meantime is check the laundry. There's always tons of laundry hanging around. Maybe fold a load of towels that just dried. Clean up a mess that you see that's easy to clean up on the floor or on the countertop for another team who may need some help. Tip number four, be sure you know your stuff. You're there for a working interview after all. They wanna test the goods. So make sure you have your knowledge base for an entry-level technician and your skill set down and are comfortable with it. You shouldn't be placed in any situations that you're uncomfortable with or are above your skill set level at that time. But things that you might be asked are knowing your core and non-core vaccines for different species, being able to administer a subcutaneous or an intramuscular injection. Be prepared to do all of those things. It is a working interview. Tip five. Make sure you're asking questions. So this one is going to also carry over from your regular interview, but make sure that you're present in the moment, 
paying attention to what's going on, what services are being provided or procedures are being performed, and ask thoughtful questions. This is also another pet peeve that I have with interviewees that say, nope, I don't have any questions. As an entry-level technician, you haven't seen and heard at all yet. You're bound to have some kind of question. So wait for appropriate times after appointments or if you're doing field work when you guys are all loaded up in the truck driving on to your next one and ask questions. Again, it's another great time to pull out your mini composition notebook, write things down as you're going along, and then ask your questions later. And finally, tip number six, use your working interview time to absorb the culture of the clinic that you're interviewing at. Keep in mind that these are the people that you're gonna be spending 40 plus hours a week with. So make sure that the doctors, the technicians, and all the rest of the team are people that you'll be able to place in high stress, emotionally charged situations with and come out feeling well on the other side. Sometimes we are placed in situations where we have to accept just the first job that's given to us, but make sure if you have the options and the opportunity, you also take into account the culture of the clinic that you're applying at. That wraps us up for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Leave any questions, comments, or concerns that I can address for you. And you can also join me on my Kendra the Vet Tech podcast for other topics. And those can be found on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and Pod Chaser. Thanks, guys.